Happy Easter! We're back and it's Easter Sunday morning and I'm really excited to be here. On Friday I told you what happened to Jesus, how he died in our place, how he paid our debt of sin. I taught you about the pain a little bit and about the sin a lot, what it meant for Jesus to actually drink that cup in our place. We deserved it. But you know what the problem was kids? It separated us from God, our sin. And God wanted to make a way for us to be with him again. And he couldn't just forget our sin. He couldn't overlook it because he's a just, fair God. What he did was through his love and his grace, offer a sacrifice, his only holy son as a sacrifice to pay for our sin so that that debt was paid, but just not by us. Kids, then what happens? What happened to Jesus? We know he was buried in a tomb almost exactly like this, right? So it would have been a rock. It was a new tomb. It was cut out of the rock and his body was just put there like for a little while because the next day after Friday was Sabbath. It was the Saturday and they weren't allowed to prepare a body for burial on the Sabbath. So they just put him there and then they rolled the stone in place and then they were going to come back and properly prepare Jesus' body because they loved him. And that's what you did for people that you loved and respected. So Mary, I told you, had come to the tomb on the Friday to see where Jesus was laid. Then she left and then she went home and she got stuff together. Her and other women were getting ready to come back on Sunday when they were allowed. It was before dawn. It was like at the crack of the new day. It would mean that it was just changing over to Sunday. And Mary comes to the tomb. When she gets there, do you know what she finds? The stone has been rolled away. The tomb is empty. I'm going to read you from the Bible what it says. It says, On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to John and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid them. So Mary's still worried right now that his body's been stolen and that she's not going to properly be able to wrap it up and put the ointment on the way she should for someone that she loves and respects. That's what she's worried about. Peter and John hear this, and they run to the tomb. And this is one of my favorite parts of this story, kids. Picture Peter and John having a foot race, running up to the tomb. It actually tells us in the Bible that they were running, but that John then like passes Peter. He outruns Peter to get there first. When they get to the tomb, John stops right at the edge. He sees the tomb is empty. He sees the linen cloths there. He doesn't go in. Peter arrives. I'm picturing like, <sighs> right? He actually goes in the tomb. He even sees the special face cloth, which was like an expensive piece of cloth. He sees that cloth lying there. They haven't taken anything, but the body is gone. What does it mean? And they go home. They leave and go home. And I'm sure they're thinking about what Jesus said, that he would rise. He told them three times that he would rise. Well, Mary is still there, okay? She stood weeping outside the tomb. She's crying. And as she wept, she stopped to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had laid, one at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but she doesn't know that it's Jesus. She thinks that it's a gardener, someone who's just kind of taking care like a maintenance guy. So she says to him, or Jesus says to her actually, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Because she thought he was the gardener, she says, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will go and get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And when he said Mary, all of a sudden she knew who he was. She says, Rabboni, which means like teacher, okay? Jesus says, don't cling to me for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and to your father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and she told them exactly that. I've seen the Lord. 
I've seen the Lord. He's alive. I've seen the Lord and he's risen. Kids, that's amazing. Think about Mary. I mean, she was the first one to really know and see the Lord. Jesus then appeared to the disciples in a closed room. He kind of like appeared in the middle of the room. They were locking themselves in there because they were so scared that the priests were going to come for them next. Jesus showed himself to his disciples many, many times, and he gave them clear instructions as to what they were to do. And you know what he said for them to do? He said, feed my sheep. He said, take care of my lambs. These lost people, they need to hear the gospel. They need to hear that they can be saved. What do we have to do to be saved, kids? Because it wasn't just the people living back in Jesus' time. It wasn't just the people living, you know, way back in the Old Testament. It's everybody who's ever lived. They can be saved by faith in God. When Jesus died on the cross, it was enough to save everyone in the whole world, but it doesn't apply to everyone. Not everyone is saved. Jesus wanted the disciples to go and tell them how. We repent of our sin. We ask Jesus to forgive us. We say that we are sorry for our sin and we are forgiven. We turn from our sin, that's repentance. And then we believe we trust in Jesus Christ alone for salvation. Not in ourselves, not in the fact that we go to church, not because our mom and dads are good, not because we volunteer or maybe we gave money. None of that. We trust just because Jesus was holy and perfect and obedient, just because he died in our place and paid our debt. If we have faith in that, if we have trust in him, then we can be saved. So we repent and we believed, putting all of our faith in God, and we can be saved because of the empty tomb, because God raised him from the dead. Because of his holiness, sin couldn't hold him, couldn't keep him, couldn't stay dead. It's amazing. Kids, I'm so thankful for God's goodness to send his son, for God's goodness to sacrifice his son, for Jesus' obedience to the Father. I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit who comes and lives in our hearts once we put our trust in Jesus, helping us to obey helping us to live a faithful life. I'm so thankful for all of it. I hope you guys have a really great Easter Sunday. I hope that each one of you knows for certain that Jesus is your Savior and your Lord. That you can say, yeah, he's risen. Because he rose, he's saved me. He's taken me with him. I want each one of you kids to be able to say that. And if you're not sure, talk to your parents. If you want to, get your parents to call me, to call Miss Shara, to call Miss Shawnee. We love you and we want to pray with you and we want to explain this to you better if that's what you want. That's amazing, okay? Let's pray. Dear God, you have risen. Jesus, you've risen indeed and it changed everything and now we can be saved and we're so thankful. And I pray for these kids, Lord. I pray, God, that they would love you every day of their life, that they would be perseverant in their faith and that one day, they would see you in your glory in heaven face to face. We ask this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Okay, kids, bye. Happy Easter.